Welcome. In this recording, I'm going to talk to you about a three-stage model or framework offered by Gerard Egan. It is useful in helping people solve problems and develop opportunities and is an ideal approach for the psychological first aider. For this recording, I shall be discussing stage one of three. The goals of using the model are to help people to manage their problems in living more effectively and develop unused opportunities more fully and to help people become better at helping themselves in their everyday lives. Thus, there is an emphasis on empowerment, but the person's own agenda is central, and the model seeks to move the person forward towards action, leading to outcomes which they choose and value. This model is not based on a particular theory of personality development or on a theory of the ways difficulties develop. It is a framework for conceptualizing the helping process and is best used in working on issues in the recent past and the present and therefore invaluable as part of developing your psychological first aid kit. The model can be used in many kinds of helping relationships and works best if attention is paid to Roger's core conditions and we discussed them on an earlier recording and you might want to refresh your memory by listening again. The title of the recording is Exploring Three Core Conditions. Okay, so the Egan model aims to help a person in distress to address three main questions. What is going on? And this question is located in stage one of the model. What do I want instead? This question is located in stage two of the model. How might I get to what I want? And this question is in stage three. We're only looking at stage one, so the question was, what is going on? Stage one is about providing a safe place for the speaker, that is the person in distress, to tell their story in their own way and to be fully heard and acknowledged. It is about a space where a person can hear and understand their own story as it is spoken out loud. It is also about gently helping them lift their head to see the wider picture and other perspectives and to find a point from which to go forward with hope. The helper, that's you, along with PFA skills, encourages the speaker to tell their story and by using good active listening skills and demonstrating the core conditions, helps the other person to explore and unfold the story and to reflect upon it. For some this is enough. For others, it is just the beginning. For example, someone might say, As you summarise what I said, and I heard it again from the mouth of another person, all the jumble began to make sense, and I was able to unravel the difficulty. Skills in stage one include active listening, reflecting, paraphrasing, checking understanding, open questions, and summarising. Useful questions include, how do or did you feel about that? What are or were you thinking? What is or was that like for you? Keep the questions open. Because a distressed person is usually bogged down with emotional material, it can be difficult for them to see clearly or from different perspectives. With the help of empathic responses and challenge, the speaker uncovers blind spots or gaps in their perceptions and assessment of the situation the things they have missed out, failed to see, or just didn't want to see. But with respectful challenge, a distressed person might be able to see a situation from a different angle. For example, I never thought about it that way before. So the skills required for stage one include challenging, offering different perspectives, identifying patterns and connections, pointing out the shoulds and oughts, the negative self-talk, blind spots, which could include discrepancies, distortions, incomplete awareness, things implied and what's not said, ownership, specifics and strengths. And although that seems to be a lot of material to hold once you practice, you'll soon discover that you already use many of these skills. Here's some useful questions to practice, but before I read them out, remember that you can use this question not only to help a person in distress, but on yourself if you have a dilemma or a problem to solve. Here they are then. How do others see it? How do you see it? 
Is there anything you've overlooked? What does he or she think or feel? What would she or he say about all this? What brought about all this as a problem for you in the first place? Do you have any other way of looking at it? Okay, so now we're going to think about focusing and moving forward, but remember we're still in stage one of the helping model and we won't be moving out of it in this recording. People who find themselves in a distressed situation often feel stuck. That is why they want to talk in the first place. In this stage, the helper seeks to move the speaker from stuckness to hope by helping them choose an area that they have the energy to move forward on that would make a difference to them and benefit them. So now we're going to orientate a speaker to focus on a particular area that they can work on by using questions such as What in all of this is the most important? What would be best to work on now? What would make the most difference? And what is manageable? So that's stage one. It takes practice and you can develop your exploratory questions over time but this stage is extremely useful when choosing to offer psychological first aid because five minutes of your time might be all that someone needs. Think about it. Just as a reminder, active listening skills, a discussion, and exploring three core conditions are available earlier recordings and form part of the learning suite for psychological first aid. Oh, and ways to practice? Just in general, conversation with family, friends, work colleagues, in fact, anywhere where you are involved in a conversation because you may discover that it improves your communication and listening skills. We will be covering stage 2 and 3 in later recordings, but this is enough for you to practice for now. Good luck with it. <laughs>